Hey art nerds, happy Easter. So whether or not you celebrate Easter, I hope you guys have a happy Sunday and a joyous spring. We have a super busy day ahead of us and we're already late. So we gotta hit the road and get going. Okay, so it is kind of late. It's like 9.30ish. We're heading back. I was able to do a little bit of painting today. I'm hoping to finish up the Mei Liang field test. So I'd had my note... This is a problem that happens a lot with me. I'd had my notes open in a notepad, but I hadn't copied them over to Google Docs. And the computer restarted itself with absolutely no notice beforehand, and it is not Patch Tuesday. So I'm having to rewrite my notes. But I mean, that happens. It's annoying. But I, before I even left the house, I copied it over into Google Docs so that it wouldn't happen again. But I'm hoping to finish that field test tonight. And uh, I need to clean up my dining room because we need a nice clean dining room for chill streams. So I guess I'll see you guys when I get home and I'm finishing up that watercolor. Hey art nerds, happy Monday! We've started a new week, so we are in the process of submitting our offer on this house. Uh, who knows how that's gonna go, but cross your fingers for me. I've kind of accepted that it could go either way and I have to be good with that. And that's always been a hard thing for me, but I think I'm getting better at it. You know, for years I used to just not set my heart on things, not get excited about things. I would tell myself not to want things because what if you don't get it? But at this point, I'm just trying to celebrate every milestone. This is a new process. This is new to us. So I'm trying to be kind of easier on myself and just accept that uh, if this isn't it, if we don't get this house, that there's going to be a better one, a better fit for us in the future, which is not always easy. I grew up in a very religious family where honestly very terrible things sometimes happen. And my mom was a big put your faith in God kind of person and a big if God shuts a door, he opens a window kind of person. And that was not and has never been my lived experience. Uh, I am a religious, spiritual person, but it's very hard for me because I've had a lot of bad things happen in my life and there was no new opportunity that took those places. I, I spent many years, in fact, watching things I'd worked very hard for just die. So uh, I am not a closes a door, opens a window kind of person. So I'm trying to find other ways to keep working, keep making new things, and stay hopeful and cheerful even in the face of rejection. Um, and religious, religion didn't ever really give me those tools. So that's one of the reasons I think therapy can be very wonderful. Religion often, depending on what kind of religious background you grew up in, you can be raised to think that if you if you were just faithful enough, the mustard seed analogy, if you were just faithful enough, you can make it happen. But they also tem temper that with, uh, but it's God's will and it's God's choice and he would never let you have anything that's bad for you, which has also not been my lived <laughs> experience. So, um, I, I don't talk about religion a whole lot on the channel because to be really honest with you, 
a lot of people in my religion have done some really awful things to people that I will not justify, that I, I think it's abysmal and that it's a sin, honestly, the things they do to other people um, and the judgments they cast on other people. And um, I'm one of those Christians who believe Christ is love and that we are called to love one another and not judge one another and provide aid to our neighbors when they need it, regardless of anything, regardless of our own judgments, that's on us to carry. That's a us problem, not a them problem. Um, but so many of the people who say they follow this faith as well feel very differently. And um, it also just doesn't really, it doesn't, hmm. while it colors why I do a lot of what I do, it doesn't, because I, I want to help people, I want to touch people, I want to make things that mean things to other people. Um, it doesn't stop me from caring about or loving people who have vastly different belief systems uh, from mine. And uh, I, it doesn't change my view. I know, I know this is this is tricky wicket territory. It doesn't change my view of them or my affection for them. That's their decision. That's their choice. And um, it, this is my choice and my decision. And I grew up where it wasn't a choice. Like I was forced to do certain things and believe certain things. And that also made religion harder for me to accept because I was forced into things I didn't want to do that I didn't feel were good for me, but I felt like I had to. So this is, but this is an art space. That's one of the reasons I don't talk about this a whole lot, um, is I don't want it to detract from this being an art space. And generally I try to, as best as I can, be a positive example. And not, I know not everybody agrees with that. I sure am whiny and complaining and annoying, and I, I understand that. And that's, that's a walk I'm walking, because as an ADHD person, we do often fall into the annoying category to other people who aren't ADHD, and sometimes other ADHD people. And the whiny thing, I'm working on that. I'm trying to see the world realistically, but not pessimistically, and that's a depression problem for me. But for the complainy, you know, if I'm just pointing out problems with something, that's not complaining, that's valid criticism. And while I don't give that unsolicited to other artists, I don't give it solicited to other people, I do have no problem talking about companies that way. That's part of how I review art supplies, is being able to point out the good and the bad so people can make a best judgment. And I'm just thinking about that because I'm wrapping up my review of the Black Sheep watercolors. Uh, this is the unboxing swatch. I ordered more from them because I really like their water. Spoiler, I really like their watercolors. I think they're great handmade watercolors. I think they're affordably priced. I think they perform beautifully. I like the company's mission statement. I hope you guys will check them out and give them your support. Spoiler, but I hope you'll still watch the unboxing swatch review. But um, I was just thinking about that because this is a two-person operation with um, a story and a mission goal I really believe in. But as someone who purchased their watercolors, had I not liked their watercolors, I would have had one of two choices. I could have just not run the review because I bought them. I don't owe them a review. We've not been in collaboration. Or I could run a negative review. Now, with individual handmade things, I usually opt just to not run the review. Um, or I make con if there's like real concerns. And this, please do not think this is the case with Black Sheep. But if there were real concerns, I might contact them privately with my real concerns and give them a chance to address those and then maybe revisit the product later on. But um, as a smaller creator, as an independent business myself, I do respect that as you're figuring out the process, there's going to be hiccups. That real life things, having a kid, buying a house, moving, being unemployed from your day job, all of those have a bigger impact on your ability to produce and your ability to make things than if it was a large company like Dick Blick where they have hundreds of employees and whether or not something's going on in the personal life of one person, it's not going to affect the end product. Of course, pandemics make that real interesting. So, um, I, I feel like as you cross the streams in YouTube, you, you encounter different expectations. Like, uh, for a long time, media and video game YouTube was very vitriolic and a male dominated space with a lot of anger and it was fun fun to tear things down. And that's somewhat shifted, but some of that it's only shifted because there's been scandals. Um, and like in makeup, YouTube, they have their own unique problems. I, uh, Alexandria Ryan 
is the person I was recommending last time. She does Ipsy and um, BoxyCharm unboxings, and I just think she is such a delightful person. And we have totally different feel. Like, I don't wear any makeup, but I care a lot about skincare. Um, but she's a makeup person, but I just love her reviews. And she doesn't always say positive things, although she's very gentle about her not so positive things. But um, there are beauty YouTubers. I don't know if it's currently going on because I've stopped watching as many beauty tea channels, but uh, there are beauty YouTubers who um, complaint, have a lot of complaints. Some of them can get kind of vicious and infighty. Um, and then you have the anti-MLM community, which I watch a lot of. And um, I do actually feel strongly about that because I do think it takes advantage of people when they're low and creates a false opportunity that yes, some people do succeed at, but most people spend a bunch of money and fail at. And it kind of takes advantage of women who want to stay home with their kids. And instead of providing a real opportunity, it often provides you're, you're providing a lot of free labor. I, as someone who is self-employed, there's a lot of parallels between MLMs and self-employment, like endlessly working and endlessly networking and not feeling good enough and constantly creating content to try to get people to care about what you have to offer. In my instance, it's only things I've created that I'm trying to sell you guys. I 100% believe in those things. They came from my hands, they came from my heart. Um, with MLMs, many of them do believe in the products they're making, but they're still working for someone else. They're still buying those products and then reselling them. And I'm not here, me personally, I'm not here to say anything one way or the other, but I do watch a lot of anti-MLM conversation on YouTube. And it does, I will say it, it does get kind of mean. Some of how they talk about these vendors, in my opinion, is line crossy especially when it becomes about their personal appearances, but that's that community. So different communities have different expectations. And one of the gripes I have about the art community on YouTube is that for a while it was all spilling tea about other artists and tearing down other artists' art styles. And I hated that. I refused to participate in that. I think that's terrible. But we've always been soft on art supply companies. Not everybody. This is not a universal. But in general, people are soft on art supply companies. And I've always gunned harder than some people at art supply companies because in general, when it's not handmade, when it's not you know a small group of people making this thing, they have the resources to improve and they're making so much money on this product. The margins are way better than handmade stuff. And as someone who works in the handmade and bespoke and create our own sector, I know what the margins are for handmade and I know their margins are so much better. So I do think it's important to hold them to task and to hold them accountable, especially as someone who's traveled to several different countries and I have gone art supply shopping in several different countries. It's usually a big perk for me. And I know that the US charges way more than Germany, than Japan, sometimes even than Canada. I know that things in Louisiana, art supply wise, are more expensive than they are in San Francisco. So I feel no guilt holding companies accountable, but I do try to mindful when it's a handmade product because handmade can be way better than buying something mass produced but there also is more of a chance for hiccups and I would rather communicate with that creator just like I would rather someone if they had a problem with one of my if they didn't get their book if their book was misprinted you know something like that if, if a button I made or a charm I made broke on them to contact me give me a chance to make it right because to, I do this because I love telling stories, I love making art, and I love making connections with people. And if a product fails and I can fix it, I want that opportunity to fix it. Um, often, us individuals, we do have, we do all our own QA, right? But like, for example, um, we had the Kickstarter Volume 2 books sent directly from Versa to ShipBob. And while we did go through the books that came to us from Versa, I found a few like, mm, I wouldn't ship this books and we set those aside. I have no guarantee that ShipBob is going to do that. I needed to use ShipBob because as somebody with ADHD, they made Kickstarter fulfillment, getting books out to people so much easier. It was, it was a um, accommodation for me. But if you're a backer and your book was damaged, I really want you to contact me. I will send you a new book. We'll fix this. Um, because this is my good name, this is my baby, this is my project, and I want to make it right. 
So I do take that kind of stuff seriously and I think people see that as complaining because I tend to be more vocal about issues than other people. I'm not going to apologize for our supply companies, y'all. They don't own me. And I'll just tell you that straight out. I tell y'all when they send me stuff. So, I don't know. I was just thinking about it because I was I was wrapping up the Black Sheep review. I really like their products. Um, I have six more half pans coming in. I, it should be any day now. I'm looking forward to that. I'm going to include the swatches for the new colors in the field test video. And I might do some mud testing with them. But they don't seem like they've returned to mud. But I still might do that just as like a... I know that helps. It helps me because it helps me understand the watercolors better. I hope it helps you guys. So yeah, today is a bit of a busy day. Speaking of books, we're going to run two Baker and Taylor orders of five books each over to the post office. Yay, self-publishing. Um, it's got its pros and its cons. On that note, if you are a librarian and or teacher who works for school and you like the work I do here, if you enjoy it, please check out my comic, first of all. And if you enjoy 7-Inch Care Wrap, please fill out. Please request those books. Please try to get them for your library. That would be a huge help. I'd really appreciate it. And if you ever want to do any kind of Zoom class visits or if you'd like me to send activities for the kids or something like that, I would love to do that, honestly. I, uh, As I said a little bit earlier, the reason I make things is I love telling stories, I love drawing, and I love connecting with other people. I love connections and I use comics as a way to kind of put the best of myself out there. My purest, truest feelings, my hopes and dreams, and my love for other people out there. So, uh, or if you're a homeschool group, anything of that nature, get in contact with me. I'd be happy to talk to your, your students about it. Happy to talk to y'all about it if y'all want to hear about it. And, um, yeah. Also, if you are a librarian and you would like some original art for your library. I would love to work something out with you. And if you order, let's say five books, I would be delighted to send you an original piece of art for free. So all you have to do is after you buy it through Baker and Taylor, shoot me an email and say that you'd like that original art and I'll pack it and send, well, I'll send it to you directly because we have to send the books to Baker and Taylor and then they repack it and ship it. And I don't really get it, but okay, sure. Um, and I wanna make sure you get your art. So yeah, also I have a doctor's appointment today. Been making progress. I have a, I know some of y'all don't care, but I'm also talking about this because um, for years I kind of had a, after my knee went necrotic from a spider bite, I had a bit of a phobia with doctors because it was mistreated for several weeks. And uh, they were talking about amputating it. And then they sent me to a wound specialist who was able to get me on the med much quicker. So I have been the victim of some maltreatment and it makes me very about certain doctors. I don't know, but I do have a primary care physician appointment in April. I'm trying, I am trying, this broken person is trying to get herself together, get her life moving forward. So I hope I share this in case it could be encouraging or inspiring or just helpful. Maybe you deal with this too. And you're like, Oh, I don't feel so alone. Um, that's the only reason I share stuff like that. Not, because I really want to overshare, but if it can make somebody else's day easier, if I can lift your burden in some way, that means a lot to me. Um, doctor's appointment and chill stream today. We're doing miniature embroideries, which is pretty cool. I haven't done embroidery in a few years. Um, I made an ex-boyfriend, we were dating at the time, all these Mega Man ornaments. And uh, when we broke up, he said he just threw them away. And I was kind of like, aw. That's a lot of work. You could have given them to somebody. Like, not, I don't, I'll take them, but you don't have to give them. We're on bad terms. You don't have to give them to me, but like, throw them away. That's a bummer. Anyway, um, I'm also hoping to get some art done today and some video editing today. And it's a busy day and it's a busy week and we've got house stuff interspersed. So, uh, let's go ahead and get cracking. Let's get moving, y'all. All right, these are our book packages. Joseph's gonna run them in. And this is our post office. He's also gonna pick up a, a pack of uh, postcard stamps so that I can be sending out them postcards to the ADs and the editors. Well, apparently we're gonna have to come back because they're at lunch. Boop, boop. Oh, to be fair, it's like one o'clock. Yeah. It's not like noon. They used to come back from lunch at one. It's a minute before one? No, it says if 1 you 1 30. want 1.30. Okay, all right. Wanna get some crickets? 
how many did you get left? So we're gonna have seafood gumbo for dinner and I don't intend on showing y'all the whole process, but I'll show you just some little snippets. So people do eat gumbo pretty frequently down here. Some people do it more in a restaurant and let them do all the work. Um, but if you're feeding a lot of people, or if you can allow it to cook for a long period of time, it works really well. So it's actually a very popular Christmas and Thanksgiving kind of thing. We're gonna probably use the Instapot for it so that it doesn't have to be totally supervised. And we are using some of those crabs from my birthday. So in the sink, I have uh, like four whole crabs and the smallest amount of smoked sausage because that's all we got. But you know, with a gumbo, you can just throw, if you got chicken leftovers, you can throw chicken leftovers in. If you've got um, leftover sausage, you can throw that in. If you got seafood, you can throw that in. It's a gumbo. That's you know, part of how, you know, a gumbo of things, a mix of things. And uh, I'm also going to defrost some of the seafood stock Joseph made in the Instant Pot. But to do that, I wanna clean out the sink first. And I'm also going to cut up bell pepper and celery and uh, rehydrate some onion for Trinity. So down here, Trinity is those three ingredients. I know up north or for chicken noodle soup, it is celery instead of bell pepper. But y'all, carrot in a gumbo just does not sound like it for me. So as a art YouTuber, clearly I don't have the best situation for recording food stuff in my kitchen, but I'll try to share. So I am cleaning and splitting crabs. These are two crabs that I've done. I think I'm doing four crabs total. Wish I had somewhere else to put these for the time being. My hands are a little crabby. Just move these over. I'll show you guys what I'm doing, but I had to get my, I had to get my mom to explain how she does it. So this is like, ooh, crab juice. If it's gonna go wrong, it's gonna go wrong on camera. All right, so I have a defrosted boiled blue crab. I am opening the easy peel slot. And then I'm going to pry the back off. And basically we want to clean out all of the guts if possible, get rid of the lungs. It's a little bit, a little bit gruesome for some folks, I think. So I guess I'll have to remember to like include a warning about it. And then I'm gonna rinse out, this is all fat. The fat does add flavor, but I was instructed to rinse out the fat. Cut it in half. And then I'm gonna rinse it again. So basically my goal with the gumbo is to get all the mise en place prepped. So Joseph just has to cook the thing. So that's why I'm doing the crabs. I already cut up all the trinity and I need to cut up the sausage. But I don't need to show y'all how to cut sausage. These are bigger than gumbo crabs usually would be. Gumbo crabs are usually smaller crabs. Yeah. That's a nice big guy right there. And I'm trying to be so, I just cleaned my counters and it's getting all over, so I have to clean again. Trying to be so careful not to get this on my clothes because I will stink like dead corpses. Remember to put this vlog in Louisiana daily life. I have to mop my floor too because I'm getting crabby juice all over. Cut, crack, and rinse again.
finally, I'm gonna cut this smoked andouille sausage up into bite-sized coins, and I think that's really all the mise en place prep I need to do because we don't have any okra this time. Did you know some people apparently put tomatoes in their gumbo? I have never ever in my life met someone who did that who was actually in Louisiana, but I found out they do do that in some parts of Louisiana. So if you put tomatoes in your gumbo, let me know down in the comments below. I'd be interested in trying it. I could be wrong, it could be good. So this is the seafood gumbo that Joseph finished up and it sure looks pretty with that crab sitting in there. And it's been smelling good all evening, driving me basically nuts, so I'm excited to eat. Today's been a lot. Um, the cross stitch, the cross stitch sure did go long. And um, my brother spoiled the ending to Stardust Crusaders for me, so that's great. And uh, they went with a different offer on the house. So um, I'm trying to be, I'm a little disappointed right now, but I think that's understandable. Also, had kind of started to feel like we might start to outgrow that house um, because some of the passageways were kind of narrow and having kids underfoot might th make that more of a challenge. So I'm trying to be optimistic. I'm trying to be like, well, that just wasn't the best fit for us. Another will come along eventually that is. Which is hard sometimes. When you have depression issues, it's hard to be like that. Um, I'm also kind of like bummed at the idea of doing this over and over and over again because I was talking to my doctor and he mentioned that Right now, he knows several people who have had to do this process over and over and over again before they finally found a house. Um, and also, congratulations to my cousin. Apparently, they bought a house very recently. And uh, that always hits funny. It, it, I guess it's kind of like somebody finding out they're pregnant. Um, anyway, you know, I'm really happy for her. And they certainly deserve it because they've had a hard year this year, for sure. And they deserve it anyway because they're both nice people. But it always hits you funny when you get a no, you know what I mean? So, like, it's just it's just been an evening. <laughs> and um, that was a real weird laugh. But I might be more upset about the JoJo spoiler if you want to. Also, they're like... He was just being a real jerk about it, too, because, like, I told him no spoilers, and then he proceeded, and I was like, get out of my house, and it kind of turned into a little bit of a fight. And it's not so much about, like, JoJo's fandom. It's more like he doesn't really have a lot of uh, respect for me, it feels like, and I can't just enjoy stuff without him trying to ruin it. And he's pushed, he's chased me out of several fandoms. Like, I used to be really into Gundam, and I used to be really into Star Wars. And basically, when my brother enters a fandom, I leave. And I'm, I'm, I wasn't planning on giving up JoJo's, but this is why. He will spoil stuff and then be like, oops, sorry. And I hate that because they go to a lot of trouble to try and avoid spoilers on the internet. Even, like, leaving social media sites for a few months until the fever dies down. <sighs> but the house is a bummer. But that's okay. Because, you know, the I, I might complain about not being able to put stuff up on the walls. And that's, a, that's not fun, you know. But... Um, it's a nice rental with a nice yard and nice floors and we've been comfortable here so it could it could be worse and I do need to keep that in mind you know we're not couch surfing or homeless so you know it's it's a little bummer and uh, I'm I'm mostly telling y'all since I know house hunting is gonna take up a lot of our our lives right now and also every in here in Louisiana everything that's hitting the market is getting snapped up like that like, to me, this feels a little loosey-goosey, a little too impetuous, but, you know, we put an offer on that house after touring it. Like, they, there was only several hours because they wanted all offers by Monday evening. So we, right now, you have to decide quickly whether it's a good fit for you, which is very <laughs> stressful for me. So I was kind of going by the, if I have a gut feeling about this place, let's give it a shot. And see what the inspection says so you know that garage there was a there was a detached garage and while the house looked the house had been remodeled in 2019 it was beautiful but the garage had a lot of issues which like like cracks all over the place which isn't unfixable it's not the deal killer but the deal killer is subsidence and uh when i was growing up my parents paid a lot of money to have their house on kellogg drive 
elevated again because of subsidence. So that's something I'm definitely looking for because not only does it cost a lot of money, but it's hugely disruptive. So we don't really want to be buying pro like we're not looking to flip. To be frank, I don't think I have the talent for it. I don't think Joseph does either. So um, yeah, may maybe this was a good thing. I really hope, I really hope the right one is put in front of us and that we're able to act on it. And uh, don't normal, I mean, I mentioned religion earlier today, so I guess if it's not too nervy, if y'all would just keep me in your thoughts, that would really mean a lot to me because I could really use all the good, <laughs> good thoughts, prayers and vibes that I can, I'll always take them, that I could get. And um, part of the push for this is so I can start, I plan on offering private art tutoring regardless, um, but if we had a good at home space, it would facilitate small groups because right now, and I'm very fortunate that this is even on the, on the table, the library is allowing people to use the large meeting room, um, but not the smaller ones. And when you're just working with one other person, <laughs> you don't need all that space. So I was kind of thinking if I'm doing really small groups, like one or two, I could just do them from home, but like redo the garage or something like that. Um, so I lost track of what I was going to say, but that's okay. You know, I'll spend this evening kind of licking my wounds, but we had already planned on continuing to look at houses. <laughs> but I'll take any good vibes y'all got. So, um, it is kind of late. And, uh, the second part of my Black Sheep Art Supply Package came in. I'm not going to open for you guys in the vlog because I'm going to open it as part of the field test video. It's funny because I literally edited and uploaded the uh, first part today and I'm not going to re-edit it. I'm just going to put this in the field test because I was going to do a field test anyway. So that's good news. And I also got a package from a friend. I'm really looking forward to seeing what's inside it. It's larger than I expected. I was expecting something like real little. So I'm like, mm -hmm. I wonder what you sent me. But, uh, and I might open that on the vlog, but I need to, I need to check and make sure that's cool first. Um, and I want to ink this piece so that I can start working on the Artify field test. And this is meant to be a companion. It's a butterfly, like a modern butterfly queen. And it's meant to be a companion piece to the dragonfly queen I did a few years ago. So, you know, even if there are some disappointments, I, there's things to look forward to. And um, that's one of the reasons I've been seeing a psychiatrist is also helping me reframe things so I'm not so prone to depression and anxiety. So, and you know what? Yeah, like even if, thinking about it, even if they'd accepted our offer, there might have been like a million things wrong that we didn't know about that would come out during the inspection. And, you know, so all about reframing it and trying to see things from a more positive life, which is like, which has always been harder for me because I don't, I read Pollyanna and um, Becky of Blah Blah Farms or something like that. Anyway, those kind of like happy-go-lucky, nothing ever gets me down, female characters. And that's not me, like at all. I am more like Anna from when Marnie was there. Like, who struggle with negative thoughts. But that's the point, struggle, so that you can um, either work with them or overcome them. Because sometimes you, you can't. And, and positivity when it ignores what you're actually going through isn't necessarily healthy either. So it's about also just learning to love myself for as best as I can for who I am because I have a lot to offer. But I have the therapy with y'all. Y'all don't want to hear all that. Anyway, if, but I, I share it in case it could help somebody else who struggles with that because people with anxiety and depression, if it doesn't manifest in what I call the pretty way. So with anxiety, that's hard because there's not really a pretty way. There's a more tolerable way of people being like, oh gosh, I'm so worried. But even that gets old with other people. My anxiety has a bad tendency of manifesting as anger, which is something I'm working on because I get so keyed up and my emotions are then really high. Um, even if I'm excited about something good, it can quickly flip into anxiety. So it's something I'm really trying to manage. And then with depression, I think people who never have it have a romanticized view of it, especially when it comes to artists. Like, oh, so melancholy, so deep. 
like the emo boy in high school who knew all the poetic words, but he was so sad. And that's not how it manifests for, there are many people, it's not cute or pretty. Um, for me, my brain's like an Ouroboros and it will start eating itself, which is terrible. Um, and that's why it's good to start to, to stay active. Um, I'm not one of those people who can't stand being alone. I don't mind being alone sometimes, but I spent so many years kind of alone in Nashville and kind of alone in Savannah that I like being with other people often more than I like being by myself. And it's not that I'm like trying to escape these dark thoughts. It's that I spent a lot of years being lonely. So um, it's more like when I am, you know, sleeping at, at night or trying to go to sleep and my brain starts in or I'm trying to work up the courage to put myself out there for an opportunity and all the ugly negative things that other people have said about me start to play in my mind about why I shouldn't even try. That's what I'm trying to overcome. Um, and I'm being honest about it and open about it because I think there's not enough of that out there. Um, I think, and I've said this before, and some of y'all don't need to hear this, but some of y'all definitely, I think, do. And some people just need to hear that they're not alone. I think social media paints a picture that's just not very real. And I don't think we have to be full of self-pity and we have to post all our dirty garbage, all our dirty laundry, all the things we're working on and ashamed of online for others to feast on like vultures but I think being candid about mental health learning disabilities anxiety depression showing that there's good and bad and just being honest and being human about it can be very helpful and I think about all of the people all of the talks that I've heard as an adult they weren't available when I was a kid but as an adult that kind of recontextualized depression, anxiety, and ADHD as things that good people can have and that it's not a moral failing. It's not a, it's not a um, laziness problem. It's not a, you're, you're just, you're guilty. You, you feel that way because you must be guilty about something. Like I feel guilty all the time. And it's not, it's not because I've done any, I feel guilty about existing, right? And it's not because I've done anything. It's because I, I grew up, I grew up with a dad who had a drinking problem and you never really knew what was going to set him off. And many people, especially women, deal with that by trying to be the peacemaker. I was not a peacemaker. But I did try to kind of like moderate what I said, unless dad really ticked me off, um, to try and smooth over the situation. So some of this guilt is just learned guilt from trying to, con trying to control someone else's bad behavior to protect myself. And I know that, and I'm working on it, but it's not easy, especially when there are other people out there, not immediate family or anything like that, who, who will say things like, well, if you feel guilty, there must be a reason. You should examine your conscience. And it's just like, it, I don't know if that's ever true, but okay. So um, that, that's why I talk about it, you know, to just help other people who feel, maybe might feel alone or they might feel like they're just super weird and uh, nobody gets them, um, to help them feel less all by themselves. And I wish this was something, I wish I could like time capsule this and send this into the past to pass me, like teenager me. And this would have made her really sad because I think she really had super high hopes for her future. And I'm, I'm sorry, I can only do some of those things, but I'm trying and I'm still trying. I'll still keep trying, but I do think um, the, the working towards acceptance and the honesty would have probably meant a lot to her. So anyway, I'm gonna get to work and I'll see you guys tomorrow and cross your fingers that we do find a shell for us, like a hermit crab looking for the perfect shell. It needs to be sort of shiny and it needs to be just so, and it can't be too big or too small. So cross your fingers for us. All right.
See you guys tomorrow. I'm really glad I was able to ink this Monarch Butterfly Queen line art for the Artify field test. Uh, I kind of wasn't sure where today was going to go. It was a weird one, but I was able to get a little bit of extra work done, which was kind of nice. So this needs to dry for at least 24 hours before I erase the pencils. I'm going to scan the line art and make it available to my amazing art nerds. And I look forward to finally testing out those art Artify alcohol markers. I was also able to begin recording the field test for Black Sheep watercolor today. So this is actually the second set of colors I've ordered from them. It's an additional four that I thought would make doing the field test a little bit easier. We don't have any affiliation, but I do want to give it the best shot possible. And I felt like I needed a few more colors to be able to mix what I had in mind. Of course, after swatching it, I realized I did not get the the bright green I was hoping to get. So I might have to rethink my idea for the field test, but this is just a little sneak peek at the swatches. Hey guys, good morning, happy Tuesday. So today I'm hoping to get some editor postcards out. I've got new postcard designs that I showed you in last week's vlog, yeah, vlog. I want to finish up the SWAT, the lifting test on these black sheep watercolors. This is going to be in the field test, so the second of those two videos. Uh, other than that, don't necessarily know what today has in store, but I'm looking forward to it. I do know, come here you, this good boy has many things to say. We want to go outside, outside. Please. There you go. Alright, well, let's get to it. Alright, so one of y'all was telling me that um, there's some good Target branded art supplies and uh, y'all told me to check them out. So here I am at Target. I do want to remind y'all, I know I sound like such a nag for this, but this channel has no outside sponsorship besides the support I get on Patreon. So if you enjoy me reviewing cheap and big box art supplies, the only way I can continue to do that is with your support. So pretty much every Target I've ever been to, the art supply section is kind of part of the stationery section. So, kind of entering stationery land now. Well, here's art and craft tools. But this looks like it's a little bit of a younger demographic for the most, most part. This is the brand, Mondo Llama, that I was kind of told to look out for. But I'm not necessarily seeing a whole lot. And there's a little bit, there's like acrylics down there. And there's brushes up here and a paint roll. Oh boy, and more acrylics. And I guess this is the watercolor set, but look, let me tell you guys something. This is 20 bucks, okay? You can get this on AliExpress. You can get it from Arctic. Like literally every dropship brand does this for way cheaper. This is not a good deal. These tiny little paint pots look super cute. My experience with the cheap stuff though is it stinks and you, like you almost literally can't paint with it. So that's not really fun either. Here are the alcohol markers. It's 15, so you get hardly anything for $15, so it's like 12. 
Um, and I think these are probably, yeah, broad and bullet. You can get a better deal for that um, online as well. The 40 count for 25, that's a little more comparable. I'd have to double check against like Amazon, but it is usually like 30, I think the Artify ones I'm looking at right now are like 35 for 48 with the brush tips. So, you know, if you're willing to shop online, you can definitely find better deals. But if you're just at Target and you're like, oh, what do they have? It's cool to see them offering more art supplies. And I'm definitely not surprised that the 40 count is all sold out. And this is a neat little case. It's just, they're not necessarily worth it. See, one of my complaints is the packaging is in general really nice, but the supplies inside aren't worth, aren't really worth it. So you're spending all this money for a nice case and materials you're not gonna be happy with. So what I wanna do when I get home is uh, be able to recommend some alternatives that you guys might enjoy a little bit more. They have some watercolor paints for $10. Like, it's hard for me to explain this if you're not used to cheap and professional grade art supplies, right? Like you have to have experience with both to know how bad the cheap ones can be sometimes. I apologize for the heavy breathing. I'm wearing a mask and it does not play well with my asthma. So these, these are $14.99, right? Um, you get 16 of these. They have the brush tip. These are alcohol. I reviewed these. These are all right. So remember that $14.99. $15, fewer markers, just a bullet tip. So it really helps to just kind of look around and be cognitive of what's available. And I was told this is a Target brand. Target could do better if this is their house brand in terms of pricing. So I'm really glad they'll tip me off to it. Um, I wasn't really sure what to expect, but looking at the prices versus what you get, I just am not impressed with it. And I would recommend you just shop competitively online and um, save your money. And especially if you're in the New Orleans area, that just, just go to David's and give David's your money. It's a local art supply store that's been in the area for like decades now. So to me, they're definitely more worth the support than, you know, the store brand that's probably drop ship. They're probably buying like marker blanks or markers from China and then rebranding them and then charging a markup. So anyway, um, I hope that was helpful. I apologize for the huffiness. It's because I can't breathe. And uh, thanks y'all for watching. Hey, Art Nerds, good morning. Uh, it is Tuesday. We began our day by looking at a house was not the best pick for us, but we're gonna keep looking. Um, I have, I'm gonna go over and help my mom with some cleaning and hit the farmer's market later today. But before I go, I do have some things I wanna work on. I wanna try getting an illustration penciled for watercolor. I want to erase the pencils on the Monarch Butterfly Queen piece and get that scanned so I can send that out to art nerds. And um, there's some stuff I wanna do for TikTok as well. So those are some of the things I wanna get done before I head out this morning. Um, so, I'm, I'm having a little, debate with myself but I think if I do want to talk if I do decide to talk about that I'll talk about it with you guys at another juncture because that's like a vlog in it what I'm thinking about talking to y'all about it's like a vlog in and of itself um but it has to be very carefully worded because it's one of those things where it's about my comic and it's one of those things that if worded improperly people might think I'm complaining or I'm not appreciative but it's also important and I, I'm still not sure if I'm ready to talk about it. And I want to talk about it in that it's something I think a lot of creators go through. And um, it's something that if maybe sharing my experiences and talking about it can help either me or other people, then it's worthwhile. But it's also one of those things where it's like, it's very tender for me. And like, 
it can cause a lot of pain for me. So I want to think about it some more and then maybe talk about it with y'all. So treats. Down. Down. Treats. 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 kitchen some and part of that is my brother is a pizza guy right now in addition to being a volunteer firefighter and he gets a lot of change in tips and he has this huge jar of change and we sat there and rolled like fifty dollars in quarters ten dollars in pennies so many rolls and then after that we went to the farmers market picked up some groceries as I showed you guys and then uh we drove around and kind of looked at houses uh, just to see if there were any that had for sale signs up in some of the neighborhoods we haven't been through. There were a couple and they've already got offers up. <laughs> so just gotta keep, keep doing it. Keep doing it. I know it might, I don't want this to turn into like Becca's house buying vlog. Like I'm, I'm clearly not sharing the houses we're looking at, which I'm really glad I'm not because that is kind of a violation of people's privacy. So. Uh, I'm not, I don't intend to do that or anything like that, but so much of what I want to do with my life from this point forward are tutoring, working from home, setting up a studio space that is a good recording space, maybe even offering art tutoring from my home at some point. So much of that, and honestly, most of my books, most of my supplies, most of my convention stuff are all packed up in the back of a closet, like in boxes. So, so much of my life kind of depends on us getting a house at some point in the near future and unpacking and setting up space again. Like, I would like to start offering more of my online shop, but I want to set up, a, as someone with ADHD and organizational problems, I'd like to set up a fulfillment center in my house where everything, I've seen some people do some cool stuff with that, where there's all little drawers and they're all labeled and it makes doing it very easy and you have like a little mailing center and I think that would work really well for me. Um, especially because I already keep my charms in like little segmented drawers and very organized when I'm doing cons. So, um, you know, there's things I want to do in the future. There's things I want to do with my business and I want to do with my art that it's not really feasible here necessarily because everything's in boxes because this is a rental or we can't put stuff up, which I know I've said a million times, but it is frustrating in a way how much that kind of affects what I want to do and I've also spent this is not an apartment this is a house we're renting um but I've spent the past 10 plus years of my life living in different apartments living in really small spaces for the most part not being able to stretch out the way I really want to so um that's kind of why I'm talking about it because to me this is also part of my art studio vlog is talking about looking for another art studio and then setting up another art studio. And it also does take
take up a significant portion of my day and it is really important. So part of these vlogs, it's also important to me to just talk about what's going on because these are supposed to be, these are kind of chit chatty things where we're just hanging out and we're talking about what's going on in our lives. And ideally it doesn't get too political or too, um, too, too close to the skin, if you know what I mean. And house hunting does kind of fall into that, that zone of like friendly chat that doesn't have to get too heated. So, um, but I, ooh, I'm my brain, anytime I drive a lot, it like fries my the circuitry in my brain. I, I, especially while looking at houses because we're looking for sale signs, we're taking photos, I'm trying to get in touch with Joseph so that he can look up online and get in touch with our agent. So, cause this is such a quick market so that she can get us in. And sometimes it's just a lot going. And then I was trying to call him and my mom and aunt were like talking in the background and then my brain's working really hard because it's trying to pay attention to the road, trying to pay attention to the phone call and trying to kind of tune them out so I can pay attention to what I'm doing. And that starts getting a little more challenging for me. I'm not, this is not like complaining again. This is just my fellow ADHDs. Y'all know what I'm talking about. So just, <laughs> if you're not one and you're like, Becca complains a lot, Keep in mind, I'm talking to my ADHD friends right this second. So today, what I wanna do for what I have left, and there's not an insignificant amount of day left, is I have this really cute illustration of carrot and some snowballs that I wanna finish penciling. I want to scan my Monarch Butterfly piece. It's actually in the other room. And I wanna show you guys something, give me a minute. Alright, so I have a lot of watercolor pencils and uh, most of what I have in my pencil case, and I reviewed that, it's like a UC pencil case and I reviewed it, I really did like it, but it's all premium watercolor pencils for the most part. I've rehomed all the stuff that isn't good, but I've run out of room because I've started acquiring Canson's Museum, not Canson, um, Karen Dash's Museum Acrel watercolors, which are really nice. And right now, those are just kind of floating around my studio because I am literally out of room in my 150, 175, because some of them are like triple stacked in their pencil case. So I found, I gotta look up who made this. I found this 200 plus pencil organizer. Look at this chonker. And y'all wanna know the best part of this thing? You can buy inserts. So I want to do a standalone review of this, and I also bought one of those accordion folding mark accordion folding marker cases because I've got a lot of the Spectrum Lords and sketch markers that I need a home for, and they don't really fit well with my Copics, and they don't really fit in with my Prismacolors. So I'm gonna have a review for. I think it's like the Deflecto one, but this one might be like the Michael's knockoff of the Deflecto one. I've been eyeing the Deflecto one for a while. Um, so I want to do reviews of both of those. Not tonight though. I'm so, well probably not tonight. I'm pretty, can you tell? I'm pretty, pretty, my brain is pretty just like in a, I'm in a good mood. It was a good day. I'm just frustrated with myself at how driving just like completely frazzles me. That's not, I wish that wasn't me. If you know what I mean. Like I wish. I could like, get out, get finished with driving and like be ready to go. And I, that's just not me. Look at this though. This, okay, now that I look at it, it does look like it would fit. Oh, I also got, so I have this, it's down where I can't get it. I have this like um, American Crafts watercolor making kit that I found at Tuesday morning. I talk about it in another vlog. And I purchased some clove oil because that helps keep it from, um, it has antimicrobial properties. So if you're making watercolor, you want to add something like this to your humectant. And I have plenty, I have plenty of binders. So I'm not in honey in the other room. So I'm not concerned about that. And I ordered some of this. It's mica, which I'm kind of yeah about because I do like shimmery, wa shimmery watercolors, but I do a lot of stuff that's um, intended for reproduction, whether it's going to be in my comic or it's something I'm screening, I'm recording as a video or whatever. And shimmery stuff doesn't always, the finished image doesn't always look as nice on camera or scanned or printed as it does in person. So that's why I usually kind of shy away from those. But I've been pricing real pigments, like already milled pigments, and they're they're kind of they're kind of expensive, considering I don't really have anyone to split them with. So 
So um, I debated between getting some like finer quality, like yellow ochre, lapis lazuli pigment, etc., and just doing the mica because I kind of wanted a baseline to compare with the um, American Crafts watercolors. So, um, <laughs> yeah. Also, though, you can use these in resin. So it was kind of a two a two reason for getting. I didn't get just get it for getting watercolor. I got it because we have a lot of resin stuff and um yes that yes brain is just like stop it becca go take a nap becca so i guess that is what i'm going to do but i am going to pencil this i don't know if i'm recording anything more tonight but i wanted to check in with you guys and tell you all about my day and um Art nerds, so I have some cool semi good news. I'm in the position of hey, I look like Dwight Schrute like way too much. Okay, um, I have some cool semi good news. I'm trying to celebrate every little victory, but also trying to not read too much into them. So, as you guys know, I've been sending out AD and editor postcards for a while, and um, I do actually check my LinkedIn, and it seems like I'm getting more people checking out my LinkedIn. So I would assume that's from the postcard. So, hey, all right, better than we were before. So um, I guess I want to ask you guys, um, if you're a fellow creative, if we've worked together, uh, would you add me and I'll add you back? And if we have worked together or if you enjoy my work, something like that, if you wouldn't mind leaving an endorsement, that would probably be a big help. But I'm only asking in that if you, have ex if you know I can do that thing. I'm not asking anybody to cover for me for something I'm just not qualified or capable to do. So, uh, I've been kind of a, I spent most of today sketching, working on um, an illustration that I'm probably going to use in the Kara coloring book, which I have not forgotten. I am still working on it, so that's in progress. Um, and now I'm ready to start phase two of the day, I guess. And um, there's several things I could do. Um, I could review that marker case. I could review this large pencil case and migrate my pencils. Um, I can get another illustration penciled. I can start a watercolor painting or I could edit video. So, you know, got lots of possibilities that can be done today. So um, I do want to kind of go ahead and get rolling. But Something else I want to kind of talk to you guys about is I was at Barnes & Noble the other day and wow, did you guys know they released a bunch of great books during the pandemic? Books that I've been reading on Kindle and now I can buy them in dead tree format? Wow, who knew? Uh, I spent so much money on books the other day. But uh, Yoshino Zuikara, the the one I've talked, I think I've, ta I've talked about it on Twitter. I've talked about it on my Discord server. I've talked about it in other vlogs. But it's by the same person who does the comic Barakano and, um, no, Barakamon, Barakamon, sorry. Which is about this calligrapher who has massive burnout. He goes to live on an island. He kind of finds himself again. I highly recommend it to fellow creators, especially those of us who deal with burnout frequently. It is so refreshing and such a treat to read. Um, she also did Honda-kun, which is about him when he was younger, which is also great and very funny. Well, Yoshino Zuikara is even though I don't think it's about the mangaka herself, it is about a mangaka who lives in a small town, has always lived in a small town, has tried to do several series, has never, he's had a little success, but it's never taken off and everything he's touched has kind of died. And he finally kind of has a series that is a hit and he doesn't really know how to deal with it. And I love it so much. The first two volumes are out. They've been out on Kindle for a while. Um, but when I saw them in dead tree format, in print book format, I had to buy them because I love loaning books to friends. I love being able to be like, this is meaningful, read it. Um, so I highly recommend it. I'll try to remember to pop a link down in the description below. But 
Uh, the first two volumes made me cry three times each independently, and one in volume two I reread this one segment over and over because it was particularly something I do, and I don't want to spoil. I mean, it's not far along enough that I think I'm spoiling it, but I don't want to give the story away, and I don't want to ruin the impact for you guys. So. Um, I think I've said this before. I think I've said if you do read it, hit me up in the Discord. And I think uh, a couple of friends did indeed read it. And while it wasn't as it wasn't for them as much, like we could talk about it, and that was really cool. And you know, not every super meaningful to me thing is going to be super meaningful to other people. But um, I th I think it will resonate with some of you guys. So that's also why I'm recommending it because it's really great. And um, if you like, they call it blank canvas in the U.S., but it's uh, Kaku Kaku Shikajika, where um, the Princess Jellyfish mangaka writes her autobiographical story. I feel like if you like that, you'll really like Yoshino Zuikara. Yeah, I think it's Zuikara. Uh, check the description. My, my Japanese has always been abysmal, so uh, generally I go with the English translation, which would have been uh, The Frog in the Well Cannot See the Ocean, which... I think is a reference to the small town you can't understand or you have difficulty understanding what the greater world looks like. And as someone who was from a very small town, I can agree with that wholeheartedly. And yet I'm back in a small town again by my own volition. So I definitely, I definitely feel like I get that mangaka. But if you do read it, um, please reach out to me and let me know what you thought. And um, I'd love to talk about it with you guys. Speaking of, if you read it and loved it, if you've been reading Kara and you enjoy it, it would really mean a lot to me if you reached out to me and just told me what you thought. Um, it's something I've been really struggling with because I have a couple of readers who are such wonderful people and they are so, give such beautiful compliments and it really makes me feel like my work is seen. But that is, that doesn't happen all the time and they should not bear the burden of keeping me going. Um, so if you enjoy the work I do, particularly with 7-inch Kara, it would really mean a lot to me if you reached out to me and told me so, because I've been really, I want to work on chapter 9, and I'm having a hard time, to be frank, justifying it, because I don't hear back from people, so I really wonder if, if what I do is any good, if what I do has any meaning, and that's difficult, because while Kara is not autobiographical, I do put a lot of myself into the characters, a lot of people I love into those characters. I put my heart, like it's, if you read Seven Inch Kara and you've read it all the way through to the end of volume nine, like I, you can see I'm putting myself out there and I'm putting my heart out there. And um, whenever you put yourself out there to be vulnerable and you don't hear anything or you hear very little, it, it does, you can do that for a while, but it starts to become really draining. And, um, yeah if, yeah, if you enjoy it, it would really mean a lot to me if you told me. And I know a lot of artists who do web, web comics, and Kara is a web comic, but also a print comic. Um, a lot of co comics artists who do web comics talk about, like, wanting more comments on their work. I'm not, I don't want, like, a comic comment every page or any, or even every chapter. Just every now and then, if you like it, it would really mean a lot to me if you just commented in the chat or on the Discord server, like, hey, I've been enjoying Kara, thank you for working on it. Just that, you know, would mean a lot. Um, and that's only if you enjoy it, you know, clearly I'm not like, like, oh, please like my work. Cause that kind of takes away from like you actually being able to enjoy it. I feel like, so that's why this is always like something I struggle with ever bringing up. But, um, it, 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 me aside, if there's ever a creator and you enjoy their work and you want to reach out to them you're not a burden, especially if all, if all you're reaching out to say, you're not asking them for anything. You're not demanding anything. You're just, you just want to tell them that their work means something to you. You're never a burden when you do that. They may not respond because they may be dealing with a million things or they may not have seen it. I mean, honestly, like often I miss Twitter messages because Twitter doesn't notify me, but but that doesn't make that not valid. It's a me thing, not a you thing. So I really, um, that's one of the things I've heard a lot of um, people who enjoy other people's work say is like, I'm very shy. I don't want to burden them. I don't want to be rude. I don't want to creep them out. And it's like, but if all you're doing is telling them their work has meaning to you, 
they will love and value that. That means a lot to them. And that's something I have to remind myself of. Like when I was a young webcomic reader, I'm not a big comments person. I wasn't then either, but I would try to make it a point like once a year to write an email to my favorite webcomic creators and tell them I like their work because I thought it was important for me to give that to them because they'd given me so much. And I really ought to um, be better about that. I know with manga, some of the, some creators are not okay with it because they've gotten so hurt in the past from their international readers. And like things we might think of as like a joke or playful often come off very differently in a different language. So I've never had the courage to write a letter and tell them how much I enjoy their work, but I have drawn fan art before, so I don't know if they've seen it, but you know, there are ways you can, you can tell people who've created things that are meaningful to you that the things they create are meaningful to you. And it's, there's a relationship, you know, people don't create things for no one to consume it. I mean, you keep a diary for that, or you never share it online for that, like, or you only show it to your friends. Like, it's valid to make things just for you. I'm not saying that, but I'm saying, like, a person doesn't make a webcomic wanting no one to ever talk to them about it, ever. Um, a person doesn't create things that they share with others without hope that it will be meaningful to those people and that they'll find out that it was meaningful to them. Like, I treasure in my heart the times people have told me uh, the My Life with ADHD vlogs were really helpful for them because that gives my life more validity. That makes what I've been through more worthwhile because it helps somebody else. I could use the things I struggled with to save somebody those struggles, and that's an empowering feeling. And um, I also really appreciate it when people, I really do, like, it's one of my favorite compliments when people tell me that, like, hanging out with me in streams has made them feel less anxious. Like, it's such a nice thing to say. So, um, yeah, you're never a burden when you say that, ever. You're never a burden when you say that. Um, sometimes when people hear that, they're so touched, they're not sure what to say immediately, or they're afraid to respond because that's such a genuine feeling. And you don't, you feel it genuinely and you, you know a thanks or a thank you for saying that is not, it doesn't feel like enough. So sometimes you're like, I'm going to respond, I'm going to respond, but it has to be as meaningful to them as that was to me. And then we never respond because it's like, it's never good enough to us, right? It gets built up. But um, I'm hopeful that together we can kind of navigate these things, um, especially because I'm particularly interested in genuine interactions. And I think we increasingly have difficulty having these kind of genuine interactions. And um, when I like turned 21, something like that, early 20s, okay? I might've been like 19, I might've been 20, but I, re I decided I wasn't going to put up a facade anymore. Like I was going to just try to be un myself. And if people didn't like it, they don't like it. And if they like it, that's wonderful. And we're gonna spend less time playing games. And I've lived that and I've been burned by that, but I've also made some of my best friends that way. And I try to use that with my internet side of things. Um, you know, people have said that I'm too unprofessional a few years ago because I was very raw about some of the issues that were going on in the industry. And then two years later, people were talking about it more openly. And um, so I do think being honest and learning how to be honest without just decimating other people, that just eating them alive is important especially for important issues that have a lot of emotion attached. Um, so that all kind of ties in. But basically, uh, I want I would love it if y'all read Yoshina Zutara, Zutana. I could literally go and get the book and show you guys, but that would, that's effort and I'm not going to do that. But um, I'll put a link in the description below because it's great and I think many of you will really appreciate it. And um, if you enjoy Kara, it would really mean a lot to me if you reached out and let me know. And you can you can let me know in comments. You can let me know via email. You can tell me on Discord. You can tell me during a chat. Even if I miss those during chat, Joseph catches them and he puts them in a doc. And when I'm feeling really down, when somebody has sent me a really mean <laughs> comment or message and uh, they, they just like hate everything about me and they think I'm a garbage artist and they think I should die, I... Sometimes we'll go have a cry about it, but often either I'll go read through the doc or Joseph will be like, you need to go read through the doc and remind yourself that what you do does mean something to people. So even if I don't always catch it in chat, 
it does get documented for me to read later. So it does mean something to me and it does keep me going. And um, this is not a hostage situation. I'm not like, if you don't, I'll quit. But it would make me definitely feel invigorated to get back to writing, especially if I knew you guys wanted to know what was happening next. I would definitely feel like pumped up. I'm wearing, I'm wearing my like training to be Hokage shirt. Like it would get me pumped up to be the comic Hokage. Um, so yes. Anyway, Joseph was like, oh, don't, because I was like, I should probably talk about this because it really bothers me. And he was like, well, what are you hoping to gain by it? But I do think just being honest about it, like even if you're not that into Kara, but there's another webcomic you really love, you should tell, or just a, like a print comic, whatever, any kind of comic that you really love, or piece of art, or piece of animation, or whatever, you should reach out, if you can, to the creator, and tell them you love it, and don't just assume people hear that all the time, because frankly, I think people hear negative about the creative endeavors, they make more than they hear the positive, especially when you're not a particularly popular creator, you just hear nothing most of the time, so, um, yeah, it doesn't have to be for me, but if me encouraging you to go tell your favorite comic artist that you like their work gets you to do that, then um, I made somebody's day a little bit better, and I'll take it. That's a win. So anyway, um, I'm going to get to work. I'll figure out what I want to do, and then I'll do it, because that's how we do here in the studio. But um, yeah, I'm really happy that the postcards seem to be starting to have some kind of an impact because there was a point my life has been so weird you know there's so many near misses so many like almost and then you know oh oh like there was this um I, I think I can talk about it now I was approached to do a how to make comics book for younger readers right at the start of pan the pandemic and that's one of my like dreams I really want to do a how to make comics comic I've tried pitching it to companies and companies often don't get what I'm they think I'm pitching classes and uh, they're like, that's not what this pitch event's for. And it's like, no, I want to make a comic about making comics. And um, I was approached by somebody at a book company, and they're like, we want to do this. You can do it however you want. And I was like, yes. But then, you know, oh, you know, I know you said 180 pages, but we were thinking 90. You know how we said we were thinking 90? We were thinking 60. You know how we said nine months and you told us you were getting married in the middle and we said that was okay? Well, really, we're thinking six weeks. Oh, but we went with someone else. Um, stuff like that, you know? And that's happened a few times. And it's always a bummer, but part of me is also kind of grateful because it's like, well, I'm glad I didn't get... I mean, I'm always invested. It hurts. But I'm glad I didn't get, like, wrapped up in this situation where... I'm actually producing the pages and then they like pull the rug out from under me because they weren't being on because like what happens is it starts with we love your work we love your bl your blog we love your comic we love your YouTube channel we think you're amazing and they act like they like me and my art and then you come to find out they've been courting like five other artists with similar lines and it is it is so much like dating it is there's got to be a better way right it's like like, there are dating apps like Bumble that have made dating different. You can kind of change your dating experience, and there, there needs to be a better way for this because, like, getting ghosted by companies isn't fun. Um, but I've had so many near misses, and I've done so many different things professionally, and I pursued my, my dream of working as a in-house comic artist or a published by a traditional publisher comic artist or working for a studio. I've pursued that in so many different ways and none of them really clicked for me because with every artist we have to find our own path. Um, and I'm glad that the postcards are having some, what seems to be a positive impact. I mean, it's too early to tell, but I was kind of feeling like everything was dead in the water for me after the Kickstarter. I think a big part of me thought having a successful Kickstarter for my comic would help me convince more editors to, to like take a chance on me and I think part of it is I'm not super great about I'll put I participate in like uh pitch events like DV Pit and, and I participate in like visible women and the hashtags and um I was a member at SCBWI and I would do the portfolio reviews but I think I never really stuck in their heads because we never really get to have a conversation and I believe me, I know I'm, I am a strong flavor of person. So um, I think that's been kind of a hindrance for me. And um, it's just nice to be making some kind of progress. Because I do believe, like, like 
you, know, you would not be an artist if in some part of you, in some corner of your heart, you didn't believe you had something worth showing or something worth saying. Um, even if you have the same view as, you know, a million people before you and you're just coming at a time when people need that thing, that's still really meaningful. So I wouldn't be doing this if I, some part of me didn't think it wasn't worthwhile for me, Becca Hilburn, to be putting her time into doing this. So, but it's not, it's often not easy. And what people want to see is they just want to see that neat and tidy progression, like a movie towards success. You do X, you do Y, you do Z, and you make it. And that, 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 that never happened for me. And, um, to be frank, I don't know that that's ever happened in my life. My life has always taken a million zigs and zags and I should have just expected that from the get go. But, um, you know, I've, I've struggled, like I've told you guys, I've struggled with depression and anxiety and I'm really trying to be more holistic as I get older with these things because when I was in my 20s, I would just like beat my body like a horse. I know that sounds awful. Um, I treated myself terribly. I would, I was very mentally abusive to myself, the way I thought about myself and talked to myself and the way I made myself work and not take breaks and not do fun things unless I finished my magical allotment of work. And I, I was sacrificing myself on this altar and then nothing came of it. Because I think my plan then was like, I'll just kill myself in my 20s, have a career, like secure a career, and then I can kind of relax and have kids in my 30s and still have this career. And that never happened for me. So, um, you know, Sometimes it doesn't and sometimes it takes later and we really love talking about all the really young success stories and we really love talking about the Georgia O'Keeffe's who didn't have their success, their, their notoriety until their 80s. But I think there's a lot of people who fall in the middle and they're just not, that their age isn't noteworthy so it just doesn't get mentioned. Um, so I'm just trying to like remind myself of that. But I'm, I'm doing my best and um, hopefully talking about this I find it beneficial because it kind of helps me crystallize my thoughts and um, what with COVID I don't necessarily have a lot of other artists I can talk to in person especially because we moved back down to Louisiana and um, in some ways I'm starting all over again but not in all ways I just haven't really found my feet again yet um, and I, I knew moving back it would be a struggle but it was like a struggle I understood unlike Nashville where it was a struggle and I couldn't understand why um, because people would say they wanted something and then they'd flake on it. So, you know, um, at least down here, they act like they don't want it and you can choose to move on or you can try to prove them wrong. Um, but it's useful for me cause it helps me kind of crystallize my thoughts and helps me kind of reframe how I feel about things. And that's really important for me when dealing with, um, negative self talk and, um, having depression issues, especially when you're struggling with this work that you love a lot that doesn't seem to be hitting its mark. Um, just talking about it and talking it through can be important. And uh, I'm trying very hard to remain upbeat and positive, not just for you guys. I actually think unmerited positivity is toxic, but I am trying to be upbeat and positive because it gives you some resiliency and um, it, it gives you flexibility and it allows you to see things that you would miss. And I'm saying this from experience because I've had some really bad bouts with depression and my brain just got more and more like a little tiny sad box and I lost my creativity and I lost my drive but I was still forcing myself to work I really felt like I was just dragging my own corpse you know um so I'm trying to think about it in a positive way because it keeps the world open and it allows you to see possibilities that might not be obvious like uh Joseph was a uh, He's been helping me with the postcards by helping me research people I can send to, which I really appreciate that. And there are resources online, um, but we've been trying to hit anything that might be interesting. Like he was the one who was like, what about coloring books? And I was like, yes, I would love to work for coloring books. I have pretty decent line art. I think I have subject matter that lends itself well to coloring books. I already do coloring sheets. Yes, I should be applying to coloring books. Um, so it's that kind of positivity that allows you to see opportunities where other people might not see anything. And I know that's not the best example because like, duh, duh, that's an option. But, um, 
not the best happening. But when I was depressed, I would have shut that down just out of sight. You know, I would have been like, no, comics are nothing. And now I'm like, comics are good and I love comics, but I love to draw and I like to get paid. And seeing your work for sale at a store really is huge. Um, so, you know, yes, coloring books are great. I'll do coloring books. But anyway, I think it's time to get to work. I've talked long enough. Hopefully uh, you guys found some common ground. If you didn't find some common ground, you know, it's cool hanging out with you guys. Anyway, it's time to get to work. The mess I don't normally show you guys. The perfect child who hangs out with me sometimes when I'm recording. Not my most glamorous look today, but I wasn't actually really planning on being facing the camera. Normally I like to look cute for the vlogs at least a little bit, but it was just kind of an off day. Uh, there was a tornado last night at like three in the morning that woke both of us up and I had trouble getting back to sleep. So I've just been kind of like, for the most part, tired all day. And I took a nap, which is very unusual for me. I'm usually not a nap person. And uh, yeah, this is just like low key vibes for me. So I just wrapped up my reviews of the UC. This is a giant pencil case. It's pretty cool. Um, I'm glad I got it because I have all these watercolor pencils and I ran out of room and this thing can hold all of them and more. So generally these days when I'm buying, when I'm buying things and I'm reviewing them, it's not really, uh, let me, let me move this. There we go. It's not really um, just for the purposes of review. It's usually for myself. Um, and sometimes that can be more fun things like watercolors or uh, markers. And sometimes it's just storage solutions. Like I also just reviewed the, and it's all, it's way off camera. It's on the floor. I'm not getting it. The recollections, uh, it's like the deflecto knockoff of that folding thing. And I, I've been eyeing the deflecto folding thing for a while. And the recollections knockoff is even more expensive than the deflecto folding thing. So I should have bought the deflecto folding thing. But anyway, I, I liked it because it's real, it's real tall for a marker container. And I was like, oh, I can put all my Spectrum Norn Triglins in there. Not really, no. Their, their design, the, you, well, y'all can watch the review and see. But what I did, what I did for a while is I used to record everything, take notes, and then do rec all my narration in um, post, which makes for shorter videos. But they're very scripted, they're very tight, and they're not, I mean, when I first started the channel, everything was off the cuff. Uh, it was like all done in one take. <laughs> because I had someone else editing, and I, to be frank, I couldn't count on him to use the correct take. Like, I couldn't count on, because he didn't watch the videos to check for like music errors or things like that. So I just kind of recorded everything to be perfect because I was handing it off to somebody who wasn't really checking the footage he was editing. So when I was editing for myself, I did most things as time lapse and then narrated over them, which is good. I still do that. Uh, but now I have a phone, it's the truth, a phone that's working better and doesn't like just drop the audio randomly. So I can do live narration again, which I like because it's 
more friendly in many ways it's less formal and more of my personality can shine through but um it certainly sometimes feels like running a marathon and i wanted to do both of those today because their organization it meant i could get things picked up even though i know this place still looks like a mess part of that is because i i took everything out that i was putting away and adhd people get it like <laughs> we try to clean and we make a bigger mess um so that yeah that was a lot of my my afternoon we're looking at another house tomorrow um this market is crazy <laughs> i have no advice other than i'm just trying to be snappy about it and not postpone it which often means just like dropping what i'm doing to go do the thing so it's actually not that late there is still time in the day to do things i don't i don't know i need to eat though like i had a soylent and that was my meal for today which is not not healthy <laughs> to have just a soylent and coffee um so i feel like i ate something else but no i think that was all i no i had gumbo i did eat i had gumbo and it was good but uh i need to go like eat something and then i'll see whether or not i i just like completely disassembled my lavalier mic while talking y'all i have so many fidgets and yet what i fidget with is stuff i use and i ah, but I really do need to clean up in here. I, I don't like it when it's too messy. Um, and to be real, I need, I, I know I'm very fortunate to have a space. When I was in high school and in college, I did not really have a space. I had to, whatever I was working on, I had to pick it up pretty much every night. I couldn't just leave it out. So like, I'm not unaware of how fortunate it, fortunate it is to have a workspace that can just be your workspace and you can shut the door. In fact, when we're looking at houses, that's one of the big stipulations is I need a space that we can dedicate as a studio. And when we have kids and we're planning on having kids, I can just shut the door and lock it so they're not getting into cadmium. Um, and I know, you know, there's been a lot of discourse about like, well, how toxic is it? And the amounts you're consuming are probably not that toxic, but if you have a toddler and they get into it and they get it all over their hands and on their face and they eat some of it like is that also I just don't want them ruining my stuff you know like I don't want to have to worry about that so um anyway it's it's important but this space I have out cluttered it and like all my stuff is still in boxes so yeah I really want to really I'm hoping we can find a good place for us and that we don't get when I say sharked out of it, I don't mean other people looking for a home. I mean, so I don't know if I mentioned this to you guys, but it was kind of a thing in Nashville where the affordable houses would get bought up by landlords who would rent them out to people. And the basically what you were paying every month would have been the cost of the mortgage or more. And so the landlords didn't technically own, I mean, they owned the places and that they were mortgaging them, but it wasn't like this was a property they'd already paid off. Um, so what happened in some areas of Nashville is you could never you couldn't find a house at a reasonable price because that got snapped up like that sight unseen by somebody who doesn't mind flipping it and has no intention of living in it or selling it again they're just gonna rent it out forever and that like seeing similar happening in Destrahan is terrifying me because it wasn't it wasn't necessarily good for Nashville it meant cost of living was very high it meant if you wanted to start a family you couldn't really do it in nashville unless you inherited a place to live you were living in the the outskirt towns which is fine but um like it was starting to happen in murfreesboro and franklin as well so what happens is no one really settles down there because you can't afford to you live there for a while and then you buy your house somewhere else and you commute and you put all that because there was no good public transit especially from like murfreesboro to nashville so you're driving every day and you're putting wear and tear on you you're putting wear and tear on the car and you're putting all these emissions into the environment and it just was a it's not good and like i don't i'm renting now but the person we're renting from she she lived in this house she raised her kids in this house and they live like next door in a slightly bigger house you know like not that that's perfect but i do think that's better than owning like 20 houses that you then rent out for the same amount the mortgage costs which you can take that what you will, but I don't have like a lot of sympathy for people doing that, especially then after COVID hit and people couldn't pay their rent and the landlords were like, 
some of the landlords were complaining because, you know, like, well, how are we supposed to pay the mortgage on this place? And it's like, gosh, gosh, I don't know. Maybe that should not be an actual issue. Hmm. Maybe you shouldn't own these things that you can't afford. Isn't that what you tell us? So, um, anyway, not that wrenching is the worst. This is a comfortable place, but it's not ours. We can't put anything on the walls. Like I've told you guys a billion times that that painting, that's the landladies. She doesn't like us to remove stuff either. And I've removed a couple just to prevent them from getting damaged. And she kind of had, I mean, I've mentioned this before and she's nice and all, but like, it's, it's clearly not like a forever situation. So while we're comfortable, it is important that we find the next place. Hey art nerds, good afternoon. It is Friday and my week has been so screwy with going to look at houses that I forgot it was Friday until I got back from looking at a house. And then I had to hurry up and update seven inch Kara. So yay. Um, I would love to tell you all about it cause I put an offer on it, but apparently a million other people put an offer on it. And uh, this is a crazy market right now. If y'all are not so we should have bought that house, should have bought a house while the pandemic was going on is what all sources are pointing to. So, um, these, the days where we're looking at a house and we're making an offer and, you know, it's really hard for me to focus because I'm thinking about the house. I'm not thinking about work or updating or Twitter. Um, I did do some sketching, which is good, but, uh, I, it's like almost five o'clock. And I'm sitting down to start stuff. So I think today I'd like to do, to finally do the Supervision 12 color watercolor set. You know, working through my backlog, getting things narrated. And what I want to do for this one is one of those combined ones where I uh, narrate as I go along and also do some time lapse portions. I just like those better. They feel more friendly. You know, they feel warmer. So, um, Sounds like a metal tin. I haven't um, unop I haven't unopened it. I haven't opened it at all, so I don't actually know. But uh, I'm excited to check it out, and I'm excited to share it with you guys. I also need to get tomorrow's video scheduled. It, you guys will know if y'all are in the future. But it's either going to be the Spectrum Noir Tricolor. Those are the watercolor markers. Or hello, Bowie. Or the um the supervision super swatch off where I'm trying a bunch of the different supervisions and that's what actually led me to ordering this thing here so yes that is my day and um I just have to keep asking that regarding buying a house if a house is right for us that we're able to get it and if it isn't right for us that it pass along to someone who is better suited to it, I guess, or has the energy or whatever. Cause like here in Louisiana, there's all kinds of hidden problems. You know, um, it could be asbestos. It could be lead based paint. It could be termites. It could be subsidence. It could be water damage. It could be flood damage. I mean, there's all these problems that you don't necessarily know about when you're just walking around and looking at a house. It's not always disclosed. And it isn't until the inspection happens that it's like, Oh, Hey, here are these, all these issues. So, um, just y'all keep, keep crossing your fingers for me and, um, let's hope that if this ain't it, the, the just right one comes into our, our lives. I don't normally like getting kind of abstract and metaphysical because I'm a very, um, practical person and I'm also in some ways a very immediate person. So getting spiritual and metaphysical is a little difficult for me. I'm, I just, I've never... Trust and faith have always been things I've really, really struggled with. And, um, not a lot of people, and I don't say this in a bad way. I trust Joseph implicitly. I trust my mom almost implicitly. Um, but there's not a lot of people I trust in my life. So trust is always a hard thing for me. Um, and when I say trust, I mean like that deep down kind of trust. Like if they say X, I will generally, for the most part, go with it because I trust them, you know, instead of doing what I wanted. I'm a stubborn person too, but I do try to be, um, try to be more easygoing than I actually am. So like, um, and because I know I can be kind of hard pill to swallow and a bit of a difficult person. So I, I'm trying, I'm a work in progress, not always there yet. 
So anyway, I'm going to go ahead, get cracking. Maybe after I finish the uh, Supervision 12 watercolor metal set of half pans, I might actually get to do the Artify field test. I finally scanned this thing. It's finally ready to go. Hey guys, it is Saturday, April 10th. So tax day is the 15th. So we've already started doing our taxes. And I kind of wanted to talk to you guys about that a little bit because it is very much studio related. Uh, not tax advice, not tax advice, not tax advice, not tax advice. I'm not the one to ask for tax advice ever, 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 ever. So um, in the past, I'd used TurboTax to do my taxes, which if you do conventions and you do multiple states, you don't want to use TurboTax because they charge you for every state. So then it's kind of like you're debating whether you should mention that one show you did in that one state where you made no money at all because it's going to cost more to buy the TurboTax edition for that state then it would, let me turn off that light, I know it's annoying, then it would to just miss out on that deduction. Or, I mean, do you admit it for cases of honesty, but you're paying $140 for a state where you're just admitting I made no money? Um, and then if you're self-employed or a small business, the, Turbo, the free version of TurboTax that is supposed to be accessible to every U.S. citizen so we can file our taxes doesn't actually let you claim any deductions as a business. It's it's a mess and um, for years I've been filing taxes on my own. I had to do long form because I had these investments and because the comp MetLife, the company I had, I inherited these investments basically. The company I inherit that was handling that doesn't work with TurboTax so everything had to be put in by hand and taxes would take multiple hours and in, with a lot of frustration because not only am I self-employed and I'm putting in all my taxes, I mean putting in all my conventions but I'm also putting in any classes I'm teaching and I don't know about you guys, but I love when I get W-2s because most com most people I work with never send me one. So instead of just being able to put in the W-2 information and it being there and not having to worry about it, I have to type everything in by hand and I have to do dig through my records, which is annoying. So this year we started using Wave Apps in earnest. Joseph had been using Wave Apps for a while. I had been keeping everything as paper files for the most part or digging it up at tax time with the case of, of like AdSense and affiliates and stuff. And Wave Apps does make it better. It does make it easier to keep track of your finances and it can send out invoices. So that's what I actually use to send out invoices to the St. Charles Parish Library. And that actually keeps all that information in one place, which is handy, but I haven't found a way to sync it with like AdSense, which is how... YouTube pays people when you when you do videos and you earn enough. I I was kind of grandfathered in with the partnership program. Like I've actually been on YouTube for a minute and uh, I was grandfathered in. So I know by today's standards, I would not make money, but I was grandfathered in. So I do. Um, I also have to put in all my Amazon affiliate payouts by hand and I have to put all my Patreon stuff in by hand and Patreon actually used to send out W-2s of some, I, I think, right? They sent out tax docs at one time. They don't do that anymore. So everything has to be done by hand, which is, which is, you know, 
know, it's a lot when, when companies could easily send out or like, oh, what is it? 1099 misks. I've gotten, I've gotten those before as tax docs as well, but nobody sends anything like that. So everything has to be put in by hand, which is not fun, but wave apps does actually make that accounting a lot easier. So I would recommend wave apps. Um, but this year we are married and we're filing joint and we're filing through H and R block and Joseph's doing most of the filing, which thank you because I hate paying tax. I'd liquidated most of my investments anyway. Um, so it's not like I have to worry about that. And it wasn't like the person who was investing my money. I, I never saw a profit on this thing. <laughs> my brother who was investing using the same, um, financial advisor, he would make money and I never made money. Um, it's like when, if you're an advisor, wouldn't you ship things or whatever? Anyway, my point is that we're doing taxes today and I kind of want to talk to you th about this a little bit. And it's kind of a every, I've brought this up many times. I've written long blog posts about it. I don't want to harp. Okay. Um, right now so this year we had a kickstarter we kickstarted volume two we were able to meet the goal kickstarter does take a not it like out of the eight thousand five hundred we raised we saw seven thousand three hundred so kick i think this is off the top of my head like i just saw the numbers but my brain for numbers is bad so like if they do take a big bite and you do need to keep in mind that you're paying taxes on the money you earn from ink from Kickstarter in addition to paying for the materials that you used I mean it is a business so um, again not tax advice not tax advice but I don't have those um, I never see money back from taxes like even when I eat dirt that year and I lose a bunch of money and 2020 I lost so much money um, I don't ever see my money back even when I was a student and working, I never saw any kind of a return. So, you know, it'd be cool, but I don't think I'm going to. So Kickstarter is going into that. I think we do get to de deduct like literally all the money from the Kickstarter went into buying the books and paying for ship Bob and sending out the books. So I, I think we probably, we didn't really earn any income on that. I mean, we're going to disclose all that, but I don't think we're going to be owing for that. I hope, um, I lost a lot of work due to COVID this year. Like all of my Nashville classes from March on were canceled. And that was like 10 classes. It was a lot of money. And um, apparently you can file for lost income, but you have to have this special form. And that kind of ticks me off because like us freelancers, people don't bother to, when you do gig work, they don't bother to send you a form when your work is canceled, when they just abandon you because COVID. Um, so like, how do I file that? Like, I know for some of those, I, I know what I would have been paid cause I know my hourly rate. And then for some of them, we had negotiated something else and I could dig it up, but I don't have the forms for that. So that's, that's fun. And then, you know, there's also lost wages from, I didn't do any conventions last year. And normally I would earn about $5,000 from conventions that's out. Um, I probably would have earned more last year if we'd done conventions because we just published a book and I lost out on all that promotional opportunity because I conventions are and doing workshops and doing talks and I'd wanted to do a book launch. All of that is part of it. So, you know, like that's gone. And, um, what I really wanted to talk to you guys, the real, the real nitty gritty, cause I don't take commissions right now. Um, for a lot of reasons, if you're one of my patrons, if I've known you for a while, if we're friends, I'll take a commission, but I am currently not open to just any type of commission. This is my own choice while we're looking at houses, while we're preparing to move, while I'm still fulfilling the Kickstarter, while I still have those obligations on the table, I'm not taking any commission. So that's income. I had already decided not to be open to that this year, so that's fine. Um, but this year was not a good year for me on Patreon. It wasn't a good year for me on with Amazon affiliates and it wasn't necessarily a great year for me with YouTube. So I want to think about how to say it cause I don't want it to come across like I'm just complaining, 
But I think it's important for artists to talk about these things, especially during a pandemic when a lot of opportunities, a lot of ways we normally would have made money were closed to us and we're shifting. Like a lot of people are going into the sticker making business, which I think is wonderful if that's what you want to do. I'm not in a position for fulfillment other than my Kickstarter right now. So <laughs> don't want to be doing that. But I was hoping we could find a house soonish so that I could actually focus on Kickstarter and getting the Natto shop going again and having new items for the Natto shop and promoting new items in the Natto shop. So it's, it's been a year for sure. And I wish, I wish my vlogs were like always exciting, good news. Like look at this new product or look at this thing I'm working on and look at this thing I'm reviewing or follow me around New York city while we hit 30 different art supply stores or like things, exciting, happy things. Um, but it's it's just been a it's been a rough year and a lot of work and it's been a lot a rough year for everybody so um that's what i'm gonna talk about so with youtube just with youtube i get income three ways and the work i do on youtube is the main reason i see that income so i have a patreon as you guys have heard a bajillion times and originally the patreon was to help fund the tutorials and the art supply reviews that I create. It's not for my comic. It never was for my comic. Now I create, then it became, you also, not only do you fund those things and you get to feel good about like, like Wikipedia, like you get to feel good about those things existing. You get to support something that helped you at one time. I started sharing my class materials that I made for my students, like um, presentations and handouts and guidelines and resources for teachers, things like that. And I share those with my patrons. And then it also became about, um, in 2021, I'm going to start sharing, or I've already started sharing a lot of my tutorials with patrons only, and they don't ever go on YouTube. So, and, and also early access. So ostensibly my Patreon is to support the work I do here, but it also gets you access to the material that I generate for my classes. And it also gets you access to my tutorials. Um, but over 2020 with many of the people who generally enjoy the content I make and support the work that I do, many of them are fellow artists who found themselves as job insecure as I am. And many of them understandably needed to reprioritize, totally respect it, totally get it. I've had to back away from other people's Patreons for the exact same reason. I get it. I'm not, there is no, no, I get it. There's no judgment. It's just facts. Um, and I'm sure many of them saw lost income from Patreon as well as other people had to reprioritize. Another source of income is Google AdSense. Now that is, that's the YouTube partnership. Um, I joined Google Ads, AdSense with the blog like almost 15 years ago and it is, it's never been a lot of money. It's still really not a lot of money. Uh, I think I get paid every other month. And it's like a hundred dollars every other month. So it's like no, no money ads, it's like 50 bucks a month. And most of it's coming from YouTube. It's like no money. Um, and then the third is Amazon affiliates, which it varies wildly on the month in 2020 because people don't have as much money to spend. I was down real. It was bad. Like it was real bad. Um, let us average it to $20 a month or less. There was a $50 month. But it used to be, I would see um, like $50 most months from Amazon affiliates and it's way down. And that's understandable. People do have less money to spend on art supplies. And honestly, if you click any of my affiliate links and then you buy literally anything on Amazon, I do see a bounty, like a little, it's such a small percent. That's the other thing. I was looking at it and the average amount, not the average, for last month, my links had generated $440 for Amazon. And I wasn't even, I link in the description, like I don't push the links all that hard. Um, but I saw $20 from it. So the amount of pushing you have to do to see any kind of return is high. You're not using, for someone like me who's super tiny, I use Amazon affiliates as just a minor way to like see a little bit of money when I recommend product review, when I do product reviews, you know, it's not meant to be like buku money. It's not meant to be all this money, but all three of those revenue streams, the ads, the affiliates and, oh, and another thing is I'm not Blick. I'm too small for Blick to offer me an affiliate opportunity. 
even though I have pushed their products, I have used their prices as like my standard for to be competitive. I'm too small for that. So that's the Amazon affiliates is the only affiliate program I'm part of. Now I am not over here. Like, woe is me. Like Shopify is an option. Redbubble is an option. There are options for artists. I'm not over here trying to feel sorry for myself or anything like that. I'm just talking to you guys about this because it's tax time. And I was literally just looking at the numbers and it's on the top of my mind. And I know as the pandemic hit, a lot of people who had day jobs were either laid off or they were working from home and many of them decided that they wanted to become artists and that's wonderful. I'm not dumping on that either. I'm just talking, right? We're just hanging out. Um, so most of my income and I've kind of been structuring my life in this direction. So this is an intentional choice to move away from conventions where you're paying to travel and you're paying for a hotel and you're move, you're flying all your stuff and you're away from home and it's physically taxing and it's sometimes very emotionally taxing and you're working the entire weekend. It's just very, even if you have high margins on your items, it is a lot of effort for very little money and it could be a great con, it could be a bad con. There's been AWAs where no one was making a lot of money. There's been AWAs where people were making a lot of money. It's just so up in the air and I wanted more stability. So over the past two to three years, I've been pushing more towards teaching. And um, that's why you guys have heard me. I like teaching, I like working with people. It's very fulfilling. I have been teaching ever since I was an undergrad, um, like doing volunteer or doing workshops or working with libraries. So, you know, that is an avenue of my life that I enjoy and that I think that's a good transition for me, especially as I'm getting older and I wanna have kids and I don't necessarily want to be that mom with, I'm not calling one person out, but years ago at NecoCon, I'll never forget it, the Artist Alley Convention Hall was freezing. Like they had it set to 60, my nose was running, my arthritis was real bad, okay? I'm freezing my butt off and I'm an adult. And across the alley from me, it's like this giant square, there's this mom with her little bitty, like two-year-old child and the child's in a playpen with like no toys, nothing to do while the mom's selling at the show. And I just, I know that's a necessity for some people. Like really, like people act like conventions are a luxury. They're not necessarily a luxury for the artist. For some people, that is how they are able to make enough money. Maybe they have a disability. Maybe they can only work certain hours. I'm not judging this person's life. But I saw that and I thought about how cold I was and how cold that child must have been and how boring that convention center was when you're an artist at the table and they had the artist alley in like a different building from all the other events and we were separated from the food. It was just like a gymnasium basically. I thought about how boring it was to be in there as an adult waiting for customers and how much worse it would be to be a small child with no nothing to do, nothing to watch, nothing to play with. And mom is like not able to pay attention to you right now. And it just left a really deep wrinkle on me that I didn't want that life for my kids. Like I have friends who through necessity, that is the life their kids lead. But I didn't, I didn't want that for my kids because I was raised by a babysitter and I hated that and I wanted different for my kids. So um, I'd been working on moving my trajectory away from convention because they weren't really doing for me what I wanted them to do. They weren't helping me build up an online customer base. They weren't helping me build up a base of readers. It was a lot of one and done interactions. I wasn't developing these relationships with people. Like I'd met other artists and they were lovely people and some of them are still my friends. But like in terms of the customers, it wasn't doing what I wanted it to do. So I was and am ready for the most part to walk away from that life. I think there's still a few shows I'd like to do, but I was doing like 13 plus shows a year. And I know like by today's standard, there's people who are doing a show or before COVID, there were people doing a show every weekend. Um, but at the time I was doing it, that was like considered a high number of shows to be doing when you're a self-published person who doesn't do a lot of fan art. So, um, and when you make everything except for the books on your table and that you had painted years ago. So, you know, um, I was ready to walk away from, from that for the most part, I was ready to walk away from, from, from conventions being such a big part of my life and such a big part of my income and such a big part of who I was as a person. 
and um, I was eager to kind of start sharing the things that I'd learned at art school, the things that I'd learned from drawing comics, and the things I'd learned doing conventions and working as an artist with people who are interested in learning that and also getting paid to do so. Because, I mean, I love hanging out with y'all. I love showing you guys things. But we just talked about my numbers. They're not great. I basically cover the cost of the art supplies I'm buying. You know, like, this is, this is hobby level. And that that is okay, but it's not really sustainable. And it's not fulfilling as a career when it's not sustainable, right? Um, it's an expensive hobby. And I'm not saying I'm quitting or anything like that, but I, I am, was before COVID particularly pivoting my life towards teaching engage, engagements and COVID hit and I was still trying, like I did a Kickstarter for volume two, which I had so many friends who were like, this is terrible timing. And I was like, it can't wait any longer. We don't know how long this is going to be. Um, and I did a lot more YouTube stuff and I tried different things on YouTube, including vlogging. And um, a lot of that was like me using the time during the pandemic to try and f experiment with new things and find things I enjoy and just try something different. So, um, yeah, I, I don't, I don't know where. I, I'm not like trying to lecture y'all or anything. I'm just talking to y'all about my life. And um, if this information is helpful and allows you to make decisions, whether you're like, I'm gonna do YouTube anyway, or I'm gonna do TikTok or whatever, like that's great, I'm happy. And if it makes you decide that you wanna like really lean into doing conventions, that's great, I'm happy. Basically, I just wanted to put like information in front of you guys that you guys could use to make your own decisions. Um, and I think it's important because that is part of an art studio, the finances and making ends meet and how much things cost. That does matter. Like you can pretend one can pretend like it doesn't factor into it. And I think that's the luxury of people who are just starting or people who make a lot, a lot of money from it. When you can pretend like it costs nothing. It's all free. It's all covered. My expense accounts got it. I don't know. That's not an option for me, but it is, studio related so I did kind of want to talk about it and um, it was such a pain in the booty butt putting all those things into apps one at a time wave app one at a time you know <laughs> but it's like none of these sites offer like a w2 for this or like um a spreadsheet or an itemized easy to parse easy to put into your tax program breakdown so <laughs> I don't know how other people do it, but I, we're doing it at home ourselves. So I'm really hoping that next year is gonna, that I'll be in a different place next year. You know, to be honest, I'm already in a different place than I was last year. And last year I was in a different place than I was the year before. So it's just about being flexible and figuring yourself out and figuring out what your audience wants and trying to make all of that mesh. And that's still such a work in progress here on this channel. And I don't want to, I, I, I've talked about it a lot, so I don't necessarily want to talk about it a whole lot more. Um, one of the big things I've said though, is that when it quits being fun, when I quit enjoying it, I'm walking away. And um, it's actually, I'm still, there's, I don't, I try not to look too much at the views anymore, but I'm still kind of having fun with it. And so for the time being, I'll still do it. And I really, really enjoy teaching Art Squad and I do use the tutorials, that the drawing tutorials that I've been sharing help me prepare to teach them. And it's a resource that if, because we have such a short time during Art Squad to talk about those things, it's a resource where if they're interested, they can check it out and it makes me feel good. It makes me feel not guilty about the fact that we're not able to meet everyone's needs the same way. Um, because it's like, well, okay, I can point them to this additional resource and they can learn and they can always get a hold of me later. Um, so yeah, but as COVID is kind of, um, as people are getting vaccinated, vaccinated and things are easing up, the library is already talking about being able to utilize me in a greater capacity, which makes me very happy. <laughs> Not just, not just for the financials, but also because I really like working with them and I really like working with the kids and I like the work I do and it makes me feel like my life has value. 
So um, I'm really glad that they have that. So today we are, it's actually like four. I've been doing taxes for a while and we're gonna keep doing taxes for a while, but that that's okay. And um, I'm kind of hoping I can do this um, illustration here. This is the RD5 one. See, I keep showing it to y'all. But last night what I did was I did the uh, supervision this one, this this unboxing swatch. So please keep an eye out for that. And my Supervision Super Swatch Off is now live. And I'm excited about that because I really actually, I really like the Supervision watercolors. So it's always cool to be able to share something that I like with y'all. That I'm like, this is cool, y'all! <laughs> and I'm also hoping I can get like another illustration pencil today. So usually what I do if I want to do like an alcohol marker piece, because I know that's going to take a set amount of time. Usually what I'll do is I'll go ahead and, what is, oh, those are flowers. Okay. I'll go ahead and start. You guys can't see it. It's printed blue lines. Sorry. I'll pencil the illustration and then I'll get to the markers and I'll just let the markers take me the whole evening. So that is probably how today is going to go. But thanks for hanging out with me and talking about taxes. I, I do, I know it's, I, I, I miss being able to, t to complain with other artists about it because um, like we're all in the same boat and it makes you either they have good suggestions and you're like, yeah, that's a great idea. I should be doing that. Or they can commiserate or they can offer some insight to something that maybe you hadn't considered before. So um, I definitely do miss that. And um, yeah. I just, I miss, I miss getting to hang out and I need to clean up this studio so bad. It's such a mess. Maybe I'll do that first and then I'll do all the other things.